welcome to the Witty Writers Show. It's a fantastic sunny Thursday where I am, I have to say. It's like, yes, flip-flop time. Um, and I'm here with a fantastic Miriam Wade. Hello, Miriam. How are you? Oh, hi, I'm doing great. Well, I'm so excited to interview you today, Miriam, um, because you are an, a brand new author. You've just not long published your first novel, which is super, super exciting, which we will have a look at in a minute. Um, and you're you're currently in the process of getting ready to release your second novel at the beginning of next year. Yes, yo, and it's both are in the same series, so it's super exciting to follow up on the first book with more uh, stories in the same universe. Oh my gosh, I am so excited for you. And, and having written a series myself, I understand how exciting it is for, the, for, for as an author to continue on your story. I think that's absolutely wonderful. We've already got lots of people jumping on and saying hello. Um, so everybody who's joining, pop your hellos in the comments um, and then I can show them to Miriam. That would be lovely. Um, we've already got Francisco. He says, hi, Beth. Hi, Miriam. And he also says, happy to see you both. Why, thank you, Francisco. It is lovely to see you too, my darling. Um, I'm super stoked about your books, Miriam, I've got to say, because you're um, you're a young adult author. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, I am. Yep. I, do you know what? I think that's one of the best genres to be in, I've got to tell you. Um, mainly because not only is the young adult genre huge in the book world for young adults. And I'm sure you know this, there is a huge amount of adults that love young adult fiction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I personally love reading young adult books. So it's a, I love writing what I read. So it's a yeah. perfect genre for me to write. I don't think, even before I became an author myself, I think what really blew my mind with the young adult genre um, was the way books like Twilight burst onto the scene mm -hmm. and had such a massive following with not only the teens but also a lot of their parents as well <laughs> and yeah blew me away. Mm -hmm. yeah it's it's nice because although your target is like teenagers anyone really um, any adult can really read it and enjoy it yeah, I, I was amazed by that. I really, really was. I, I, I've actually seen some like adult book groups that are specifically for young adult. And I think that's because there is such a lot of people who prefer to read really great stories like yours, but without all the naughty bits in the language. Right, yeah. And that's kind of what makes like young adult versus adult books really different. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We've got some more people saying hello, so I'm going to pop them onto the, the screen so you can see them. Um, we've got Heather, who's joined us. Uh, she says hello to you both. She is lovely. She's just started a book club. I'll keep plugging it because it's great. She's absolutely wonderful. Um, we've also got Jennifer, who's joined us. She says hello. Hi, Jennifer. Um, oh, Francisco says my pleasure. Why, thank you very much, sir. And I love his I love his profile picture, by the way. His beautiful horse. And he looks really elegant. That's his polo outfit. It looks very cool. Um, and we've also got now I'm gonna I hope I don't get this wrong. Uh design designer? Designer? Does that sound right, William? I, I'm so sorry if I've pronounced your name wrong because it looks absolutely beautiful on the screen. Um, she says, Hi Miriam and Breath. What a great day for an interview. I agree. I absolutely agree. Um, and don't forget, everybody, if you've got any questions for Miriam, uh, please pop them in the comments and then I can show her. And, um, oh, Francisca said, thank you very much, Beth. You are so welcome. It is well deserved. Now, last November is when you published your first book. But I know, because I Googled you and did lots of research, <laughs> Um, you've actually been writing since middle grade, haven't you? Yes, yeah. So I've always been just writing as a hobby, especially in like middle school and um, not as much in college, but definitely high school as well. Um, 
just really enjoy making up stories. My friends and I would write books together and have all these adventures in them and things. And that's still kind of the type of books I write today with adventures and everything. That is so super cute. I love the fact that you had friends that you were close to that you used to write together. You you kids must have had an absolute blast at that age. Yeah, it was super fun. And it was right around like we didn't have computers yet. And, and so, well, we had like family computers, but we didn't have our own computer. So it would be like writing in notebooks and stuff, which is crazy to think of doing now. <laughs> like I much prefer typing. <laughs> Do you know what, you and I both, it's so much quicker, but I have, I, I am actually friends with some authors who just thoroughly enjoy the process of writing it in longhand. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm so used to typing now, I think I'd get a hand ache if I started trying to write my books down. <laughs> I don't yeah, think it I mean, I still have good. lots and lots of notebooks, but I usually write um, on my computer. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I, notebooks are a must. And I, I actually interviewed one of my authors, which was Jerry, um, who's a historical fiction and fantasy author. And she has a notebook per book. So she knows exactly where to find all her information. That was the biggest tip. I'm, I'm like, yes, I need to do that. <laughs> um, we've got a comment here and she's, oh, it's Deanna. Wow, I've never seen it spelt that way. And it's beautiful. That really, I love unusual names. I'm going to have to make a note of your name. You might, you might end up in one of my books, Deanna. I hate to say it, but you might. Fame at last. <laughs> <laughs> She's so cute. Um, oh, and Jennifer says, I keep a Bible of each of my books. I said, yes. And that's exactly what Jerry recommended. So I think, well, I might have to do that. Now, I know as well as writing, uh, you know, while you was in middle school, you went to quite a few conferences as well, didn't you? Mm -hmm. um, I thought here that you attended the yearly Johnson County Library Writers Conference, and you also um, did quite a number of child essay contests. Now, I, I personally, I never had those sort of opportunities when I, where I was living in the school I was in. Do you think that doing those activities and conferences at that age helped you as a writer? Um, probably, yeah. I mean, it definitely, you you never really know what to expect to get out of one. Um, I've definitely gone to a few like conferences and been like, oh, I'm gonna learn X, Y, Z, but then you learn something completely different where you just get um, an idea that's just like, oh, I should try to do this with writing or try to do that or things like that. Uh, and it also really cemented like my enjoyment of writing as well um, just to be encouraged from a young age um, from like outside people who aren't friends and family where you're like oh this other person is like giving me feedback and doing all of that which is really cool. I think that's absolutely brilliant and I, I, and I honestly think that having independent people who who don't know and love you like your friends, your close friends and family having that feedback from them is invaluable because not only are they you know that they're, they're not biased and they're going to be more honest with you um but as an as a writer yourself you can take their critique and believe it because there's no end game for them you know they're not afraid to hurt mm -hmm. you they're going to just be honest and factual um and I think, and I'm sure you found this because I know you've got fantastic reviews on on Amazon for your for your recent release. Um, getting reviews from complete strangers are the best. It is. It really is. That's it. They don't know you, so you know what they're saying is their truth. Um, and and I think there's no better compliment than that. It's like yes, okay, yeah, a complete stranger. Somebody. <laughs> You, you never knew and then they reach out to you or they leave a review and they're like, I really liked your book. And you're like, wow, that means so much. It's <laughs> incredible. It does. It does. And I keep saying this on my on the show, but uh, reviews are just invaluable. I mean, they are so important. One, because it keeps us motivated and keeps us going. Um, but two, it helps us get introduced to new readers as well. So it's, it's like a win-win-win situation with mm -hmm. reviews. 
isn't it really? <laughs> I love it. Uh, Francisco says his first novel and early works are all in notebooks. I think it's very smart. I say I need to have a shelf just for notebooks, I think. Um, oh, and he says, congratulations, Miriam. Oh, Thank he's you. so lovely. He really, really is. Um, now, your recent release, which was released in November, um, is called Rise of Night and Sword. Can we have a look at the cover? Because it's fabulous. Look at that. I absolutely love it. It's beautifully done. Yeah, it's crown on top it is lovely so so did you come up with the concept for the book cover um i worked with a designer uh with my publisher her name is lauren and she uh gave me some ideas and uh really designed it herself i kind of gave her some elements of the story and yeah she did an amazing job and i love the colors like originally i was like oh I really want like green because I love green, but then she did this this purple with the bright pink in it, and it really pops. Like it's it's not I haven't seen many book covers like with this color, so I really like how it stands out um, from a lot of other books. It, it's absolutely gorgeous. It is absolutely stunning. And just so everybody who's watching knows, I have put all of Miriam's links um, attached to the. Uh, the video um so you can go straight to all her platforms and she's 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 quite a, a social media butterfly she's everywhere um and, <laughs> and everywhere else so you can check out miriam's fantastic book and on amazon you can see all her amazing reviews they're brilliant so it's a it's a fantasy adventure slash mm -hmm. urban fantasy yeah. so give us a rough idea what your book is about and how on earth you came up with the concept yeah, okay, so um, the shortest description I can give for it is it's a retelling, reimagining of uh, the original like, King Arthur story of King Arthur getting Excalibur, um, but it's set in a completely different universe. Um, it's a steampunk universe. It's in the 1920s, so it has some 1920s elements, the steampunk. And then the other thing that is unique about this universe is that um dinosaurs roam freely in it so in a, like the arthurian legend there's all these mythical creatures there's dragons there's other great beasts um and in my story all of those are replaced by different dinosaurs that is amazing i do you know what i absolutely love fantasy stories that just have a completely different concept do you yeah know I mean? yeah i think that's absolutely brilliant and i love the fact that you've you've just let your imagination run riot. I think that's absolutely brilliant. And of course, my favorite char character, Guinevere, is in yes. your book as well. And <laughs> she her. is one of the main characters, so it really follows her um, adventure on following this map to Excalibur and then meeting Arthur along the way and all the mishaps and everything that goes on in their adventure. That's just absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now, what made you create um, the dinosaurs and dragons and these mythical creatures. I mean, is this, have you always been fascinated with mythical creatures? Yeah, well? I mean, I've always really liked dinosaurs. Like when I was little, I was I was like, I'm going to be a paleontologist. But then I, I never did that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I've liked dinosaurs. I mean, Jurassic Park is definitely my favorite movie series. Um, so I really wanted to incorporate those in just like thinking of a universe where where there's dinosaurs just there like what how different would that be than just your daily life now it's interesting to think about i, I think it's absolutely amazing i think that's one of the mo one of the reasons why i love anything sci-fi fantasy um it's because you can literally pretty much do whatever you want mm -hmm. any type of world you want um, and I, I absolutely love that. Now, growing up, who were your favorite authors and, and did they influence you in, in your career? Um, probably. I mean, it's hard to say. I read a ton as a kid. Um, I love The Chronicles of Narnia. That's probably one of the first series I really got into. Um, 
And and I loved when the movie came out. I wanted to be Lucy. I was like, I want to get her hair cut and I want to be her. <laughs> um, so like just that that kind of book is what I've always re really enjoyed reading. Not to say I don't enjoy a lot of other books as well, but um, just the idea of just like adventures in this universe that's not your own is um, invent something I like. And I always people always say write what you want to read. So I was like, okay, well, this is what I want. I want to read. So I'll write it. <laughs> Somebody else will probably like it too. <laughs> well, exactly. And, and that's the thing, isn't it? I think people always think, oh, should I write a book? You know, it's, this topic's been done so many times. Yeah, maybe, but it's not been done by us. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody has their own view and their own perspective that they'll put on the story. Yeah, exactly. And our own writing style as well. Mm -hmm. like, you know, you never know, there might be a book out there about the same topic, but people might not be as keen on the way it's written. So I, I think I think it's absolutely fantastic. I really, really do. Um, oh, we've got some more comments. Um, oh, Kathy has joined us. Hi, Kathy. She says, hello, and question for both Beth and Miriam. What do you do to overcome writer's block? Very good question. So have yeah. you ever had writer's block, Miriam? Yeah, I definitely have. Um, and for me, I, I heard this somewhere and I don't know where. Um, so I wish I could give whoever told me this credit, but they said, Tra change up um, your writing. So by that, I mean, like, if you're typing on a computer, like change the font. So suddenly you're writing in a different font and then you just break out of where you are. Or if you're writing in like a room, go into a different room or go outside or do something to just disrupt your environment, but not like too crazy. Um, and then you'll like have new thoughts. Or if you're writing on a computer, start writing on paper and they'll, you'll have like a new wave of creativity. And that seems to work for me in the yeah. past. I mean, it doesn't always work, but. It's been the most effective way I've found. <laughs> well, from personal experience, I think that um, writer's block is is just as individual as the writing itself. And and I've I've always said, especially when I'm when I'm working with other authors, I never I never even call it writer's block. I call it needing a creative rest. Basically, I just see it as your brain just needing a rest. From, from so much creativity. And you're right, sometimes it just takes listening to music or watching your favorite movie just to, to give your brain a rest. Because we as writers tend to put ourselves under so much pressure, don't we? Especially when we're writing a really important scene. You're like, oh my I God. Must get this scene done. And then you get Yeah, stuck. I've got to get this right. And, <laughs> and it's very, very daunting. But as you said, there's lots of other ways you can you can trigger your motivation and your creative mind again. One of my favorites is actually listening to the last couple of chapters that you've written. If you actually listen, Word has a has a speech um, icon, so you can actually tap it and listen to what you've written. And I find that really helps because if you if you you know if you're in a quiet room, you've got your eyes closed, and you just listen to your story, and you're picturing what's going on in your mind that generally helps me figure out what's going to happen next it just pops into my head um but just so you know kathy myself and my friend and author autumn bardo um we've actually just created a new group called write better author smarter which you can find on facebook and autumn has actually um did she actually created a video all about writer's block um, so you can check that out on our group, as I said, Write Better, Author Smarter, or you can go direct to Autumn Bardo's YouTube channel, and it's on there as well. So um, there are lots and lots of tips and, and ideas. But remember, it's not writer's block, you're having a creative rest, because your brain needs it. <laughs> um, we've also got Wendy who's joined us. Hi, Wendy. She says, hello, ladies. Um, oh, and... Um, Francisco says, great cover. 
I agree. I absolutely love it. Um, Josephine has joined us from the UK. She says, good evening to you both. Yes, love the Chronicles. Um, I am so with you on that. I think the Chronicles of Nar Narnia were, they were my favorite books as a child. They literally just exploded my imagination and mm -hmm. I just loved them. Uh, and funnily enough, I actually watched the movies again recently because I had a friend staying. So we did a Narnia marathon. <laughs> it was great. I loved it. And and you're right, because Lucy was so cute. She yes. is such a <laughs> character. Um, oh, oh, I did that one. I do beg your pardon. There we go. Um, Josephine says, I read other authors to take a break and enjoyed it so much. And that's another good idea, isn't it? Just taking a break from writing and just enjoying Reading again for a little while, I think, helps as well. I really, really do. Um, and Josephine says, LOL, I have my headphones on right now because she is listening to, to her work. <laughs> so it does it does work. It does work. Um, so once you've finished The Rise of, of, of Night and Sword, did you go straight into to writing book two, which I know is going to be out early next year? Did you go straight from doing one and then straight into the other uh yeah i pretty much uh i i went and i like did some revising and stuff but even before i had a publisher lined up for this book i started the second one i was had ideas of what i wanted it to be but it's definitely taken a while to write the second one because i started it but then i went back to focusing on the first book um with it coming out and then after it came out I went back to the second one and then finished it off and everything and now it's getting some edits done so I'll be really excited it's gonna oh be my gosh. it is super exciting now did you know it was always going to be a series when you started book one or did you start writing it and think okay this is going to be a series because it's it's a bigger story than I thought yeah, I always planned on doing a series. Um, so the first book, it is very conclusive, like it is, a, it can be a standalone. Um, but I always plan on exploring more in the universe. And then um, there's just such a great depth of legend with Arthur. Um, and I really wanted to just pull more elements from that. And um, as the series goes, it, it becomes more like inspired by and less like retelling of. Um, so it gets some more creative liberties um, with the stories and hopefully people really enjoy reading them. <laughs> oh, I, I know they will. I know they will. So have you always been interested in King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table and Guinevere? Is that something that you've always been interested in? Um, Probably since college, at least, yeah. Um, I've always really enjoyed the stories. I, I feel like I've read, I've read them before college time, but yeah, since college, I was like, oh, I like these these stories. And there are always so many different adaptations out there and different movies and different books and things like that. And it's fun just to read and, and watch all the different ones and kind of see the different takes on the stories and the different the different perspectives of like the director or the writer and seeing like what kind of creative elements they put in with them. That's so cool. Now, now tell me, cause obviously creating our characters is one of the, the, the major things we do as, as writers. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's, it's not easy for everybody because creating characters can be a tricky situation, you know? Um, yeah. Do you tend to just, completely create your characters from scratch um from looks to personality or do you tend to sort of base them loosely on people that you actually know i feel like they're mostly from scratch uh maybe taking some different elements of people i know but i don't really feel like any of the characters i've ever created has been like oh this is my friend just kind of tweaked a little bit it's always been more like this this part of this person's personality and this part from this person and this part and this part from this person from the show and this part of myself and all of it mixed together into a new person. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the hardest things I find is actually creating the names. 
Yes. Yeah. And that, that was the, one of the nice things with um, the, the King Arthur story is, it, although I created their personalities and, and things like that more, you have the names already. And so yeah, you don't have to, to think, okay, is this the right name? And then halfway through the story, be like, no, this is the wrong name. I don't have to go back and change it everywhere. <laughs> I, I've had to do that. I've literally had to do that. I did that with book one because I initially called my, my character Eve. And then I, I as I got through the book, I was coming towards him and, I, and it suddenly dawned on me, I cannot call my character Eve. Even though it felt right, yeah. it, it sounded too much like it could be religious and my book was not religious in any way shape or form so i had to make the tough decision to to change it even though it felt right i still right. knew i had to change it but it, it i did grieve a little bit because i was like but i really like i got so used to typing her name eve did this and eve did that and it, it was a bit of an overhaul but but never mind um so you're going to be doing or releasing book two early next year and it's called um clash of love and realm realm yeah. i love that i love the world realm to be honest with you it just gives that oldie worldy feel straight away doesn't it um so that's going to be book two in the one sword saga mm -hmm. uh, as everybody you can check out um all the details as i said on amazon and goodreads for for miriam's books so is this, a, is this a continuation of the story in the same realm? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's kind of like what happens next um, after the conclusion of their first book. So it starts taking place um, only a few months after the end of the first book, and then it travels through some time a little bit. So, yeah, it's like what happens to these characters after the events, and, and we see. I was just super excited. How much research did you have to do for your books? Because obviously, you know, it, you know, you've put your own spin on mm -hmm. King Arthur and and that type of era. But obviously, being interacting with dinosaurs and all these mythical creatures, right. did you have to do you know a, a mass load of of research? Yeah, um, I feel like when I started out, I read a lot of different books and stuff. So then I just kind of had like a baseline knowledge. And so then now when I'm writing them, I'm not like having to do like a ton of research all at once, but any sort of things I'm like, mm, is this right? Then I can go and uh, like, either like look online or in reference books and stuff to see like a little, a little more information. Do you know, honestly, I, I, I've researched so much since I started writing. I could probably write a book just about my Google history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think if anyone saw my Google history, they might be a little bit worried. But it was just purely for research, I promise. <laughs> it really was. <laughs> now, I want to ask you about, the, 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 the obviously, the dinosaurs in your story. Mm -hmm. um, because all this new research is coming out and everything. Um, and all these paleontologists are now thinking, oh, maybe they didn't have scales and tough skin. Maybe right. a lot of big dinosaurs had feathers. So, so in your story, did you go for what they already think they know, or did you go with the new knowledge? Of well, they, most of them have, have are lizard like, so they have you know scaly skin. But there are some smaller more bird-like ones who have feathers. But yeah, the majority are kind of the, what we think traditionally of dinosaurs with with their leathery skin. That is awesome. That really, really is awesome. I, I love anything to do with that. And and if somebody finds a new, new fossil of a new species, I'm not super excited. Right. I think it's great. <laughs> <laughs> so what is your future plans then? I mean, you are you hoping just to to stick within the young adult genre or do you think you might have a go at branching out into other genres out of the fantasy? Yeah. Where so, um, right now, obviously I have the Sadi book coming out and then there's going to be a few more books still in the series. So I'll have those. Um, and then I'm also working on a non-related also fantasy, uh, but less like sci-fi fantasy, more, uh, just, urban fantasy kind of like in this world we know of, but with fantastical elements. Um, 
So I'm working on that, but I just started it. So it's not, it's the, not very much yet. And so we'll see how, how long that takes me to write and where the story goes, but it should be interesting. And I have lots of ideas that will probably never become books, but we'll, we'll see. <laughs> you never know. You never know. So, so are, you a, are you a big planner? I mean, obviously, you, you're just starting with this, this new, new adventure. Mm -hmm. um, are you a planner or do you just go for it? It's kind of a mix. Um, so what I usually do, like it was interesting hearing about people with the notebooks for their books. I usually make actually a one note notebook for mine. Um, and I'll kind of start in there and I'll have a rough idea of like the overview of the plot. Like, okay, this is the, the conflict and this is where I want the story to go. But um, it usually doesn't really flesh out all the details until I start writing some of the scenes. and. I don't always write like chapter one, chapter two, like I'll like skip around and be like chapter one, chapter 12, and then I'll just kind of jump back and forth and see, and then I'll all come back together in one cohesive thing. I, I, think, I, I think anybody who, who, who doesn't know anybody who's an author has got no idea how much work it takes, honestly, because <laughs> I didn't. I got to be honest with you, I had, before I became an author myself, I had no clue the rings you have to go through to actually create and publish a book. Um, when you when you did book one, um, The Rise of Night and Sword, did you f find the whole thing just thrilling and exciting or was you a bit blown away by the amount of work it took to do, actually do it? Um, writing the book, it's like writing the first chapter was awesome. I was like, I wrote a book. It's so great. And then I read it again. I was like, it's so bad. <laughs> but uh, yeah, after writing, it was great. And then editing it is hard because I'm like, but I love everything, even the horrible parts. I don't want to delete things I made. <laughs> um, but then after editing it and then everything, it's like so much better. <laughs> like, oh, okay. I'm glad I did that. <laughs> it is it's tough, isn't it? I don't think there's anything mm -hmm. worse than having to chop bits out of your own work because you're right. And nine times out of ten, there's always at least one bit that you absolutely, absolutely love, and then your editor will go, No, yeah. you're like, oh, I love it. No, it's yeah. got to go. And you know it's the right thing to do, and you know it would be better for it, but you've just taken such a shine for to that section. Oh, it 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 hurts, it hurts. How easy was it for you to find um people to work with? Is that something that you, you found quite easy? You know, your book cover designer, your editor, um was that all fairly easy to do or did it take a while to search for the right people? Um, yeah, so it took a while. Um, I, I sent out the book to a bunch of different publishing houses and a bunch of different agents to see if anyone was interested in it. Um, and so that took some time and a lot of rejections. Um, but then eventually um, my publisher did really like it and they wanted to publish it. So. Once I found them, it was great because um, they had everyone, they had the, design, the cover designer, the editors and everything. So it was very, very good to um, just kind of hand it over to them. And then they could be like, okay, this is what's going next. And as a first time author, it's like, okay, okay, good. <laughs> but it's very overwhelming too. It's just like, wow, there's so much behind the scenes stuff that you just don't know about. And everything is new too. So going into the second book, I have a bit better understanding of like the process so although still be lots of different things going on it'll still be like okay at least i know what to expect <laughs> well, that's the thing isn't it i i i mean i think it's fantastic that you you found the right publisher and everything for you because it does make everything so much easier yeah. um i don't know about you i actually found writing the query letters was actually harder than writing the actual book Yes, definitely was. It was the most nerve-wracking thing I've ever done because you, you're literally trying to trying to sell your book to a complete stranger who you know really nothing about mm -hmm. um, and, and trying to do it in a way that's going to intrigue them enough to want to read more. That, to me, was super stressful, much worse than actually writing the book. 
Yeah, and it's and it's really hard to get that first rejection, and you're like, oh man. But then by the time you get like the tenth rejection, you're like, okay, well, someone maybe eventually, and otherwise, yeah. like I'll go back and revise, or I'll figure something else out. That's it. You just got to brush it off, haven't you? And I think anybody who who's new to the business, I think it's important for them to realise that sometimes it can just be bad timing. You know, there might be a specific trend that's happening or is just about to start happening that we have got no clue about. Um, you know, it, it might not be the right time for that particular publisher. They might be looking at, you know, that type of genre right now. They might want to be focusing on a different target group there's so many variables isn't there um the most important thing is to keep trying i think you know if you don't have any luck you know have a look at what you've done maybe as you said change it up a little bit and then keep trying um because with some authors so even some of the most successful authors it's taken years for some of them to actually get picked up and then they they've just blown up on the scene so you yes. just you yeah. just never know trick is just don't give up just keep going yeah, keep going. yeah and you just never know and just getting the getting your story in front of people then yeah people exactly. get to see and think about it exactly um oh diana's just said i am very proud of you miriam writing a series of books is harder whereas writing a sil a, a single novel how do you keep yourself inspired writing all those books in one universe for years? Good question. Yeah, uh, definitely found book two to be a lot harder to write than book one. But the interesting thing I found is that book three is a lot, like I started book three and it's not as hard as book two was to write. So I don't know, it's just like a hurdle I had to get over was the second book. Um, but in terms of just, I guess I just like really like the universe I created. So I'm just excited to, to explore it more in the story. So um, I haven't had a struggles yet, but who knows, maybe by the, the next book, I'll be like, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm sick of this. <laughs> but yeah, so far I'm just like, oh, this, there's just so many things I wanna explore in the story. Oh, that's super exciting. That is super exciting, especially because you know, it's it's all up here. Mm -hmm. We get to literally just put it on paper and share that with with everybody else. I think that's wonderful. I really do. Now, are you? Do you tend to use visuals when you're writing? I know some authors do. They they'll actually draw out their new world and and their new creatures that they've created and everything. Do you tend to do that, or do you just keep it all up here until you write it down? Um, a little bit. I mean, I definitely like have some like a Pinterest board of just images that are more like a mood board than like, a, oh, this is this outfit more just like, okay, so this is kind of some of the ideas and this. And definitely though, for like layouts of things, I like to draw those out so I stay consistent because otherwise I'm like, wait, did I say that? And now I put it over there and wait, and hold up. Was I said that was to the north and now it's to the west? Hold on one minute. <laughs> so that that's always been nice. But other, other than that, I don't, I haven't, I mean, I I have like the descriptions and then I try to create visuals, I guess, after in a little bit. Yeah, I, I would love to be, I, I've always been very arty, excuse me. <coughs> I've got terrible hay fever right now. Um, yeah, I've always been quite arty, but I would love to be able to be really good at drawing people. Yeah. Um, and I've always, yeah, I've always sort of painted and, and drawn um more plants and animals and that type of thing um and, and more still life but people i think are the hardest things to to visualize and put on paper and and draw um and yet i would love to do it i wish i could learn <laughs> you never know i may I'm, i should keep going really i think it's great to broaden our horizons um are you hoping to obviously um, do more book conventions and that type of thing once everything is lifted and we're free to roam the planet. Yes, definitely. It was definitely interesting uh, having the book debut in the middle of 
lockdown and everything and really limits what you can do in terms of um, um, getting getting the word out, I guess. It's all online or social media. But yeah, hopefully as things start opening back up and places have events again and bookstores are having in-person events to be able to do some of those and do things in person, it would be great. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And hopefully it will be before you release your second book, that would be nice. And then you can <laughs> yeah, and, and promote both of them. That would be absolutely wonderful. Um, are there a lot of the events that you could do around your area or are you more likely to have to go to the bigger cities? Yeah, there's a there's a good number of things in the area, which is nice. I wouldn't have to go too far to go get access to a bunch of things, which is yeah. really nice. That's fantastic. I tell you, that's one thing I think a lot of authors have been struggling with recently is the fact that we're, as you said, we're, you know, we're, we're not able to get out and do all these things. But it's fantastic that you're doing so much online. I think that's absolutely mm -hmm. wonderful, um, especially because our readers miss it, miss us all. I think, you know, there's such a big community, isn't there? A, yes. Such a huge book community, um, and, and these people absolutely love going to readings and book signings and you know doing the meet and greet um i think we're all missing that really yeah it's definitely yeah the libraries around here have been having had in-person events they've been doing them all online and it's just like oh it's just not the same <laughs> no, it really really isn't it really really isn't um, can we have a look at your book cover again? Because it's absolutely fantastic. Look at this. It is beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. I, I'm, I'm super excited about book two coming out as well. Do you have anything in mind for the second book cover? Are, are, are you uh, really thinking about I, that? Or? Yeah, I've been thinking about it, but I haven't, like, I don't have anything specific yet in mind. I'm going to have to start kind of thinking and putting some some ideas and thinking further about that but yeah i'm sure it's gonna look really great though <laughs> oh, it's gonna be absolutely fabulous it really really is um now have you have you sort of um struggled with the the promotion side of it during the lockdown um or have you been really quite active on the social media? Because I know some of the authors that I tend to try and help uh, have found it really, really tough trying to do any sort of promotion. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think since this is my debut novel, I don't have like a previous thing to compare it to before the lockdown. So it's not like I can be like, well, the last time I was able to do all these things. So, but it's been nice just to try to find things um, since everybody's virtual, there's been, I guess, more virtual opportunities, um, yeah. so be, like podcasts and, and like um, this uh, Facebook Live thing here as well, uh, and things like that, or just um, or just staying active on social media to just kind of boost it throughout. But yeah, it definitely feels weird just kind of, it's just like in my house when the, when the book came out, I was like, okay. When my last book came out, I was in exactly the same situation because I think I released mine on July 4th and and um and, and I was really I was really hoping for a big party celebration right. and no none of it happened. <laughs> Maybe I'll have that for the next book. Maybe everything will be a lot better by that and then I can do big exactly. a big party. Yeah, that would be absolutely fabulous. I, I'm super stoked for you. It's so exciting. What did your family think about you publishing books? Uh, I, I mean, I hope they're excited. <laughs> um, but they are, yeah, they've all been very supportive of me, uh, uh, which is great. My husband has been like the first one to read my drafts to tell me what's really bad. He's, which, which is nice, I guess. <laughs> he's, he's a, uh, nicely brutally honest um 
which which uh, is hard to take at times, but you know it's coming from a place of love. So you're like, okay, at least like you're telling me this before someone else. Yeah, <laughs> then I can change it. Exactly. Um, but yeah, they've all my family's been very like excited and re read my book and everything, which is great. That's just wonderful. Were they surprised that you started writing books, or did they see it coming? Um, I feel like they saw it coming. I, I think maybe some of the like extended family was so more surprised, but I've always really liked writing. And so um, it just seems like a natural progression um, to to do. Oh, do you know what? It's amazing, isn't it? How life just takes a turn. Oh, yeah. And, you know, and you start off on one path and then something happens and you end up, you know, becoming a published author instead. Yeah, that's absolutely fabulous. I really do. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's I I know like if I if I told myself like my young self like hey you're gonna be a published author I feel like nah that's not true like I'm just gonna write stories but I'm never actually gonna publish anything. <laughs> that's so lovely. Now I've got to ask you the friends that you used to write with in middle school. Mm -hmm. Did you keep in touch with any of them? Yes, yeah, I have. Yeah, and they've read my book, which is great. It's just like crazy to think like, oh, yeah, we used to write stories together. And now you're actually reading one of mine. <laughs> like, whoa. That's just amazing. And do you think it will inspire them to maybe have a go, considering they loved it just as much? Yeah, as you? maybe. Um, we'll see. It would be cool if they did. But yeah, I think, uh, I mean, everybody changes, like, I guess, as they grow up. So, but maybe some people will. Uh, Right, as well. I think that's awesome. I think that's awesome. I, I love it when people see someone they care about achieving something. And I think it, you know, it that that motivation and inspiration trickles down and you know makes other people think, I'm gonna go for it. Life's too short, let's do it. Yeah, um, I, think, yeah, I think that's absolutely wonderful. I really do. Miriam, you are such an angel. You really are. And I'm so stoked about your next book coming out early next year. I'm super excited for you. Um, I can't wait until everything opens up so you can just load up to the scene. I, I'm so excited. Um, before we do go, though, I need to give a special shout out to, to one of my readers, Fletta. Um, she is absolutely amazing. And I'll be sharing her company name later on um but look what miriam i've got to show you because she blew me away today look what she sent me today so look she's done this amazing flask look with my book covers on wow isn't that amazing i was thrown away and then she sent me this as well oh the wrong place look <laughs> isn't that awesome and she sent me Beautiful bookmark as well. I, awesome. I, opened, I nearly cried. I opened it, today, Miriam, and I was like, oh, my God, that's awesome. I was getting all emotional. She is amazing. Um, I said I'll, I'll post pictures and, and everything on my page later on um, and, and with her link because she does it as a business. She's amazing. So do check her out. But, Miriam, thank you so much for coming on today and being the most spectacular guest. You are <laughs> You're fabulous. You really, really are. I'm super excited to see your career just keep taking off. It's absolutely wonderful. Um, for everybody who's watching, don't forget, all of Miriam's links are available and are attached to the video. Um, and I will be uploading um, the interview to my podcast and everything as well. So if you don't get a chance to watch, you can still listen to Miriam and my dulcet tones shall we say <laughs> Miriam thank you so much for for joining me today and I really hope that you'll come and chat to me again in the future um especially when you've got book two coming out because yes, I'm super that would be, that it is so great. and that that was coming out early next year and it's yes. Clash of love and realm and that's part of the one sword saga so if you're into anything fantasy anything to do with King Arthur and uh, Guinevere and the Round Table, um, you will definitely need to check out Miriam's books. Um, and please make sure you all leave reviews because they're so 
helpful to us authors. Um, thank you, my darling. And uh, I will see everybody else next week for another session and another show of The Witty Writers. So we will see you then. And uh, thank you, Miriam. Thank you. For now, everybody. See you later. Bye.